Hello everyone out there. This is Prophecy in Christ above all. My name is Tony. Let's get into it. Today I want to talk to you about a very significant, the first event that's going to take place in heaven, all right, uh, for in a chronological sense for all of us, okay, as believers. Those that believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, you know, he died on the cross, he shed his blood, resurrected from the dead, and he ascended and he's sitting, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. And he's going, to come, he's going to come back, but we are going to be raptured up, okay? And the word rapture, a lot of big, big, powerful, they think they're powerful churches, are not preaching about the rapture. They're not preaching about prophecy or eschatology or anything like that. They're preaching, you know, the two-thirds of the Bible, which is the historical part, and they're preaching about the instructional part of, you know, be kind to one another and love one another and everything else. But there's no journey, and the journey that God has for you to know is prophecy, okay? Prophecy. And we all need to know that. But the problem is, is well, you, a lot of churches aren't doing it, and there's something wrong with that, really. You know why? Because the whole Bible needs to be taught. The whole counsel of God's Word, as Paul says, not just a piece here and a piece there, whatever. All of us, okay, need to go through that. But I want you to know something. Some people will say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Okay, it's not in the Bible, but you want to know something? It's more of a translation of what it is. Because in the original Greek, it means to be rapidly pulled away, taken away, you know, forcefully taken away, that kind of thing. That's the rapture. And it went from the Greek to the Latin. The Latin word, you know, means rapito, rap, rapture, okay? But I want to show you something else, too. There's words in that are not in the Bible that we believe in, okay? And these are major doctrines, like, for instance, the Trinity, or we, so let's get more technical, called the triunity, okay? Because the Trinity means there's three separate, okay? And, but they don't work together, but they're, toge but they're in one. But the triunity means they all work together in one, okay? And I'm just going to go to uh, Matthew uh, 28, verse 19, okay? This is the Great Commission. Jesus says this to his disciples. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of what? The Father the, and the Son and the Holy Spirit, okay? And teaching them and so on and so forth. And, you know, I don't seem to understand why people have to do something like that. They have to say... Well, the word is not in here, and the word is not in there. I had a minister one time tell me, you know, um, that, um, you know, when uh, Moses was taking the Israelites, you know, uh, into the promised land, you know, that kind of thing, they, they ended up uh, with the, they went through the Reed Sea, right? They didn't go through the Red Sea. The scripture says Red Sea, okay? But then, you know, some people come along and say, well, the Red Sea is only six inches deep, which is not true, Okay. That's the kind of, that's baloney too. And, you know, I said to myself, what kind of person is this in this position? He's playing an intellectual argument. He's trying to prove that he's smarter when he's really looking like a fool. And he's not being a fool for Christ. Okay. Uh, some of you may think, oh, this guy's really, he's acting like a real clown up there. He's a fool for Christ. I don't mind being a fool for Christ. And there's a lot of Christians who can't stand Standing, they can't stand, stand to stand up like that and to look like a fool for Christ because there's nothing wrong with being a fool for Christ, okay? It's when you don't want to be a fool for Christ, that's when you have a problem. And there's a lot of that going on out there too, okay? And part of it is standing up against the wrong things that have been claiming to be as truths when they're, or not even moving towards them, okay? Well, anyhow, let us go to, let's get back to the rapture part here. Let us go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, okay? Um, and uh, I want to tell, I want to kind of um, title this uh, the event, the first event in heaven, okay? The rapture of the church, okay? And this is the rapture. This is talking about the rapture. But look, look. Uh, verse 50 down to 58, okay? Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable 
inherit the imperishable, okay? My body is perishable, okay? That means it's going to die one way or the other. It's, it, it, you know, if you give it time, it's going to die, right? And it's flesh, okay? And blood. And it's not going to inherit. It, you can't put this in the kingdom of God this way, all right? But the thing is this. It's gonna, God's going to have to do something, okay? He's going to have to change things for us if we're believers in Christ. And what does it mean to be a believer in Christ? To believe in his death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Go up to any Christian, that, you know, somebody even, even really mature, ask them, tell me the gospel in three words, and they'll be like, ah, I don't know, Jesus likes me, Jesus loves me. That has nothing to do with it. No. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Your faith, the Bible, is centered on those three principles, okay? In a sense, that's a, a triunity of, of, of thinking too, you know? All right. All right, so let's go on to verse uh, uh, 51, okay? Um, Behold, I tell you a, a mystery. It's not something everybody fully wants to comprehend or un understands to comprehend. It's a mystery, okay? It's like we don't know exactly what's behind door A or door B or door C, you know, that kind of thing, a mystery, okay? We shall not all sleep, which means what? Some people are sleeping already. What does it mean to sleep? That means these are the people that passed away. They died physically. They're in the ground. Okay? But we shall all be changed. Okay? We're all going to be changed. The ones that are sleeping. Okay? And the ones that are not sleeping, like you and I. Okay? But the ones that are sleeping in the graves and so on and so forth. We're all going to be changed. If we, if we were believers. Okay? Okay? In a moment, in a very short period of time, in, and then Paul goes on and he says, in a moment, in a small period of time, in the twinkling of an eye, okay? The twinkling of an eye. How fast is the twinkling of an eye? Huh? How fast do you think it is? It's 150 milliseconds. 150 milliseconds. It's extremely quick and fast. It's going to happen. And that's going to, that's the violent part. It's going to have, boom, like that. It goes, it's going to be faster than that, even. Okay? So in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to all be changed. Okay? According to what the scripture says here, right? And the scripture says that we believe it, right? Or do we say, well, I'm not sure. I have a feeling in this way. Man. No. Do you go, you agree with the scripture? Because you know what? If you don't agree with the scripture, that's what you're going to be ending up like. All right? Like like a like a like a toy, like a chicken, you know, like it's not right to do that kind of stuff. You gotta go with the scripture one hundred percent. Okay? I mean that. And I'm saying that out of love. Okay. Okay. Um Okay, it goes on here in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump or trumpet. Okay? There's gonna be there are gonna be other trumpets. But this is the last trumpet for us as the church. We're going to be taken out quick. Okay? You know, some people say, well, there was another trumpet before. It's the last trump for us. Okay? And that trump is going to take those that have been buried and those that are alive. And boom, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be resurrected, per se. You know, we want to call it resurrected, raptured up. And we're going to have a glorified body, okay? And we're going to be before the Lord in heaven, okay? Okay, in the twinkling of an eye, uh, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, okay? And we shall be changed, okay? Paul is talking about the dead first, because the dead, is going, the dead are going to go first, believe it or not. We're not going to be able to, oh, look at that, because we're not going to even have the time for that. Because it's going to be twinkling of an eye, which is like, wow. But they're going to go first, because they were before us, okay? Which tells us we need to understand and respect the older generation of people, too. Okay, because they're going to go up first before us. And this day and age, it doesn't happen. You know, the, young, the younger folks, many times, many times, I'm not saying everyone out there, 
But the younger folks today look down upon the older generation, like they just don't know what they're doing. And yet, why? Because they understand the computer better sometimes. Okay. It, during the time of Adam and Eve, it was the other way around. With Adam and Eve, with their long life, they were walking around like computer, like, 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 like tons of encyclopedias. They had so much knowledge in them, in them, right? And the younger had to go to them, okay? And still younger have to go to the older because the older have lived a life way before they have, and the younger ignore it, go do their own thing. You know, I hear this, this, idea of, well, they have to find it out for themselves. Yeah. So they go and ruin themselves with other things like drugs and uh, all kinds of stuff, you know, and that's, no, that should be stopped. Parents should be able to stop that immediately. Okay. That kind of a, when I was a kid, I was told, ah, you see that, you know, that family, that person, whatever, that child is a, a bad influence. Okay. They're, they're always doing this. They're always doing that. They're always in trouble. You get away from them. And I listened and I was glad. And when I wasn't part of it, I felt more empowered. Okay. You don't go along with the crowd. You know, you go along with Christ first. Okay. Twinkling of an eye. Okay. Here we go. Um, the dead will be raised imperishable. Okay. Which means you're not going to be, there's no way of perishing anymore. Okay. You have perishable, imperishable, okay? Um, now, let me explain something to you. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Some people say eternal life. If you really want to put it, technically, it's everlasting life, because you, we have not been here eternally. Only God has been here eternally. Past, present, and future. That's eternal, Okay? We haven't been in the past. Now, well, maybe we were in God's plan in the past, but God had to make a plan, so we're not, we cannot even claim that, okay? All right. All right, so it's really everlasting life. Okay. Um, and, we, and we shall be changed. Okay, so we're all going to be changed, all right? For this perishable must put on the imperishable. In other words, what I am today, what you are today, is going to have to put on something else. Okay? And that something else is going to be imperishable, not perishable. Okay? So we're going to have an everlasting, an everlasting life. Okay? Okay. And it goes on here, and this mortal, mortal means, you know, normally the word mortal, we get the word from morte, means death, okay? Uh, this mortal, this, this person who's going to die eventually, one way or the other, you know, must put on immortality. So the immortality means no death, okay? Like God is immutable. What does it mean to be immutable? It means it doesn't change. Mutable means to change. Immutable means not to change. Okay? I remember my father, I asked him that question when I was a young kid. What does it mean to be immutable? He says, never change. I said, what, what do you mean? He says, God never changes. He, he gave it, he stuck it to me. I'm like, it's still there, you know? But, when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, in other words, our bodies right now, because God's going to put this on us, okay, or me, you know, and, and, you know, in the rapture, he's going to give us the glorified bodies, okay, uh, have put on the imperishable, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So death is swallowed up in victory. In other words, death is destroyed. It's, it's, it's processed through. Swallow, you know, you, you swallow something, it processes through. It's processed through. It's the end of that past, right? Okay. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death. Okay. 
Where is your victory? In other words, you thought you were going to get, you, you know, you, everybody thinks that death is going to get them and once and for all. No. According to the word of God, according to the way Jesus Christ did it for us all, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, he has given us victory. And it's through him we have this victory. Only, not through your denomination and non-denomination and, and through your buddies here and your buddies there and your family. and Only through Christ, okay? Only through Christ and Christ alone, okay? Um, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? <laughs> you know, do you ever get uh, bitten or, or, or stung by a bee or whatever? It's aggravating. It's it's you can die from it too, right? You, you know, right kind of you know the right kind of person can die from it, but that sting of death is gone. It's past, you know. And Christ took the sting away. And you know, when Christ died on the cross, our sins were forgiven. I'm going to get to this in a second here too. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Let me get to the next verse. The sting of death is sin, okay? And the power of sin is the law, okay? So when Christ died on the cross, he, he died on the cross for our sins, okay? So he took our sins away by the shedding of his blood. But remember this, this is the, this is the other half of the most important part that a lot of people don't realize, don't get and don't care to get when they need to get it. If Christ did not resurrect from the dead, physically, none of us would be justified before the Father. Okay? Because God the Father looks at us through the blood of Christ and says, that's my child. Okay? And you know, I heard some, some guy on TV saying, I don't know, I'm, I'm talking about this child of God thing, you know. We, you know, I, I all of us, are, the Christians, I can't believe... They don't, some of them don't believe that we should have uh, open borders and let the people run in and out of our place, you know, our country here in the, uh, and uh, we're all children of God. Well, let me tell you something, we're not all children of God, according to the scripture, you know, we're all children of God. <coughs> wrong again, you know, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, that's a real wrongy, because um, the, the idea is this, even Jesus said, even Jesus claimed that there were some who were sons of the devil. So let's not play games here, okay? Some people are born again by God, and some are not. And they better wake up if, and truly find out if they are, okay? Um, all right. Let's go on, he says here. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. And it's God who gives us the victory. The Father, Father God, God, God the Father, sent his son, okay? He made the plan. The Father made the plan. He sent the son, okay? The son was the sacrifice. The son did everything that the father, father wanted him to do, right? And then after the resurrection, the son, okay, you know, ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and then he sent the Holy Spirit 50 days later, okay? And that Holy Spirit, if you're a true believer, belongs in and lives in you, okay? And, um, and he's our guide. He's the one who teaches us the scripture, okay? Not some tradition and not some of these people, uh, you know. You know, you go according to teachers, yes, okay? But there's so much in this book that you just can't limit it to teachers because you tell me a teacher who can who knows this whole whole book, I'd say they're liars. Can't 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 be. Okay, I'm telling you every application, everything, every doc. No, they don't understand it all because this book is powerful, and you have to know the major doctrines. Though that's the skeleton, the major doctrines are the skeleton of God's word. Okay. And then you have the teachings, okay? The teachings are like the, you know, the flat, the, the, the muscle, okay? And the nerves of God's word, okay? And then you have the skin. What does it do? What, what, how are you dealing with, the, with life, okay? 
And, you know, sometimes you could be a kind person and people could misinterpret you. Sometimes you could be a loving person if people can interpret you, okay? Uh, you know, it says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, you know, it's a love, a joy, peace, patience, all this, you know, all those fruit of the Spirit, right? But you know that you could go around exemplifying this fruit of the Spirit, not necessarily consciously, but doing something right. And what happens is people take you the wrong way. And you know what you do then? You say, God is the only one who knows my heart. God is the one who knows my mind. I don't have to listen to that. That that complaint, comment, or whatever it is. I'm not talking about comments like, you know, this, you know, on YouTube or anything like that. But I'm talking about, you know, you don't have to get back. You know, you just leave it alone. Keep moving on. You know, that's the key. Okay. All right. Let's go back here. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through ourselves, what we do. We don't sin anymore. That's a lie, because we all do sin still. The sins of omission, sins of commission. Sins that we know about and sins that we don't know about. Okay? The victory is through Christ alone, Jesus Christ alone. Okay? And as the scripture says here, the victory is through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not, oh, he's my savior. You know, he he pulled me out of, you know, he, he, he's my uh, my buddy. He's the Lord, first of all. Right? Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You don't hear people say Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. You hear Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right? Okay. All right. And then the last verse, it says here, therefore... May, excuse me, therefore, my beloved children, uh, brethren, excuse me, be steadfast. What does it mean to be steadfast? It means you better be on top of it. And there's a lot of people out there ain't on top of nothing. Well, they're not on top of it. Be steadfast. Wow. Apply yourself to this. Be steadfast. Immovable. Don't even budge. Don't even think of budging. Immovable on what this is teaching here. Okay, the rapture is going to happen. Okay, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil, whatever we do for the Lord, is not in vain in the Lord. In the Lord, that doesn't mean everybody's going to say, Hey, good job, or Hey, they may even say, You stink. I don't know. But you know what? It don't bother me either way. I mean it. Because, you know, I know what I do for the Lord, and you need to know what you do for the Lord, and that's what counts too. Okay? Um, and, you know, I, I just think that, um, you know, there are people out there, I've, I've seen other YouTubes out there where, oh, people are claiming that the, the rapture is going to happen on a certain date, and people are making dates and everything else. I'm like, yeah, okay. I've heard that many times. It's crazy. When I lived in New York, there was a big newspaper, one-page newspaper article that came out, big letters, big words on this pa paper. It said by, you know, two, another two weeks from that point on, it's going to be the end of the world. Oh, well. <laughs> Didn't happen, did it? No. But on the other hand, too, I think there are people out there who are eagerly looking for the Lord because they know what's going on out there. And I kind of respect their, their eagerness and their perseverance in it. But you never put a date on the second coming of the Lord. You never put a date on the rapture. Okay, But I do believe, too, that Jesus talks about seasons. And we're in that season. If you go to Matthew 24. Okay, I'm not going to go to it now. But Jesus, they asked him, what's the day of the hour? He couldn't give the day of the hour. There's no way of giving a day over the hour. Only the Father knew the day and the hour. And I'm going to tell you why. The 40 different calendars that are going, that are in process, in, in being worked. There are 40 different calendars today, all right, throughout this world. And Jesus couldn't turn around and say, oh, the May Mayan calendar said this. And the, oh, the Egyptian calendar said that. This is the day. No, he couldn't do that. And he wouldn't have done that. You want to know why? Because the Mayan calendar and the Egyptian calendar and the Nostradamus calendar and all these cuckoo things out there are trash. They're garbage. 
These are the world system trying to creep in to the church, okay? And a lot of Christians have allowed it to happen and don't belong there, okay? And then the hour is another one, too. The hour. Okay, let's look at the hour for a second. I keep using this over and over again if you hear me talking. I say, you know, there's three or four, there's four different time zones, okay, on mainland America, okay? China has one. In other words, if it's 10 o'clock uh, on the east part of China, it's 10 o'clock on the western part of China, okay? In the morning, at night, whatever, okay? That's the way it is. You can't, you can't dictate a name a day or an hour, but Christ gave us a season of when things are going to happen, and we're in that season because things are happening. And he also indicated that Israel was going to be here. And there are a lot of so-called Christians out there who say, oh, uh, God is finished with Israel. Go ahead, be blind, because that's not true. If you want to be blind? Be blind. Be, somebody's blinded you with wrong teaching. Go ahead, be the blind one with that, okay? So Israel has nothing to do with it, but Christ said it did. Just look it up in Matthew 24. Israel's still here. Israel's come back, okay, after... Oh, I don't know, 1,800 years, 2,500 years, 3,000 years, whatever it is. But Israel did come back. So remember that, okay? All right. And, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a hope that we have, the rapture. And I'll be coming out with another one about the same topic and other topics in a chronological order of, you know, what's going to happen and how it's going to happen and so on and so forth. Uh, and, you know... You know, if you if it will help you to understand the chronological order of what's going, but the next step is going to be really the rapture, I believe. Okay, and um, you know, it could happen a uh, hundred years from now, you know, or even two hundred years from now. But I really think it's going to happen sooner than that. All right, all right, Lord bless you. Keep your chin up, and let's get moving for the Lord. Okay, bye bye now.